Brittany. This is Brittany. Brittany Lynn Scott. Scott speaking. I am not Scottish, but I am liking it. <laughs> I'm going to the Scottish Games this weekend, and I'm going to have a blast. I did last year. <laughs> this year I'm dressing up. <sighs> Scottish. I got to practice my little accent I like to do when I'm alone. But now I won't be alone at the Scottish Games, my little accent. No, 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 no. And my accent goes with my outfit. I am so happy. <laughs> so terribly happy, happy, happy. Like it's an overjoy and it's an awful gift because it's extremely overfilled with Abundance, abundance, abundance of happiness, like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do with myself? Happiness, terrible, I can get me in trouble with this. <laughs> you see, you see, I have this from last year, it's beautiful. I scored it. Beautiful fairyland that's all green and la la and ooh la la and hello. Hmm. I like talking to myself or others. Make me self aware is good. Self aware and making self aware is so blissful. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I can tell myself messages all day long. It's like camera is a time capsule in moments, if not reality, seconds. Oh yeah! <laughs> Bless you. You know. Maybe you don't know. But maybe I shouldn't tell you. Or share with you. My own little world. I was just thinking about a man. And what a man would want. A man would like. And what a man's best friend is on a woman. Truly. I think you're looking at it. Anyways, I think it's beautiful. Truly. I think I'm beautiful. Look at me. I don't see anything. You know, I don't understand that. What, what can you define? I mean, it's already there, but like... Shadow. Ooh, shadow. Shadow. Well. A little makeup. Makeup shadow. You know what I mean? Maybe a little glitter one. Maybe an eyeshadow shadow. Just a little shadow stream, just because I do have a defining hello mint. Um, that may be a defining of uh, shadow, you know, like the beautiful things with the eyes and stuff, and the lips, and the forehead. Don't forget the chin and the cheekbones. Oh, and these are beautiful babies. See? These beautiful babies. See? You're supposed to. It goes with the makeup line. Duh. <laughs> and I have chappy lips. Apparently. Oh, God bless y'all. Shall I? Shall I? Shall I? Shall I? I want to sing. But then I get hushed real good. And I don't want my blessing to be taken away. My singing voice. No, that would be awful. Terribly awful. I would go into seizure of sock. See, it's true. <laughs> I can't even get to the word with when I am in it. <laughs> or I got to it. But did you hear how it sounded? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my blessing. My virtue. I'm still a virtuous woman. Got it all.
bundled up in joy, bundled up in joy, cause my God is good. My God is sweet, my God is lovely, my God, our Creator. In my life that I call, I I give you all credit anyway. You know you may not have done it, and you have a servant anyway, or whatever the case may be for you. <laughs> I give you credit for all things I own of and desire to have obtained. Wanted or not, it's forced. And I love it. It's funny. It's very funny. Money can be forced in my fucking hands and I may want want it and it's a lot of it. And he tells me to fucking take it. Because money's dirty. To a woman, at least. To me. And I'm a woman. And money's fucking dirty, people. Dirty. Don't want to fucking know where it comes from. Shit. Probably there, start start there and then work your way into something that's <clears throat> it's a secret. I keep it a secret. <laughs> because I'm not disrespecting what I like that feeds me, clothes me, makes me happy. Makes me happy. Money makes me happy. Money makes clothes on my body beautiful. Money makes my food, tummy, body beautiful. Money makes me happy. Apparently beautiful too. <laughs> and I just called it shit. I am the shit though. I'm a bitch. But I'm not a nasty, raunchy little shit bitch. Nah. I'm one of those Christian bitches that you're like, damn. Why did I start? She's gonna fucking kill me now. Some shit. It's true. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian bitch. I'm a first godly Christian woman who's holy and, and, and like life dedicated. My parents are proud to say moments of hours it seems like to them. I was in church. <laughs> Right off the womb. <laughs> this child was in church. <laughs> They're pastor people. <laughs> They're all up in the public of uh, the the um, politics of, of churchhood, of pastorhood. So, you know, their children represents who they are. <laughs> Pastors, I mean, that's just how they are. That's, the, that's just the life, okay? Anywho, they are perfect at bragging, okay? <laughs> Because <laughs> they got me into church. Like, oh, that's it. <laughs> After birth. First Sunday, she was there. <laughs> it's true. I was there in church my first Sunday in my life. Like, swear to God. <laughs> I could probably say the first time in my fucking life I ever said that speech. Ah, got a recording too. I said it because the recording. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I don't know. I'm proud of my life. I'm very proud of my upbringing of Christianhood. Wow. Strict in the motherfucking house of strict. Jesus Christ. My father. It's gonna die if you sin. So you better not sin, child. Strict house. I mean it. Strict motherfucking house. We didn't have a worldly man. Do you know I didn't know who Tupac was until I was fucking 15? 15 motherfuckers. In this day of age, 15. Let me do some history. That was back in 2001. I was 15. No, I was 14. 2002. 2002, because I was 13 in 2000. I was really proud of that. 
I was real proud. I was a teenager in the 2000. Officially a 13 year old in 2000. Ah, I was so happy. Do the math. 87. Okay, it's my birthday year. Oh my fucking god. Oh, it was so awesome to be 13 in 2000 year. But <clears throat> 15, so... Fuck. Fuck. Yeah, so 2002. And my fucking head has like, add five years to 2000. No, bitch, I was 13 in 2000. <laughs> add two more years to 2000. <laughs> it went a little quicker for a moment. <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> I had <have> fun. <laughs> You only wish you knew what fun goes up in my bitching head. <laughs> only if you knew. <sighs> TMI, right? Alright. So I knew. I was fucking 15 when I... And I barely introduced... Got barely introduced to Tupac because I was like... <gasps> He's a worldly guy. But I was like so rebellious at that point in my life. Like, who the fuck is Tupac? Like, like, who the fuck is this person? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so, so here's some of his music, Brit. And, um, some of his shit, I, I don't know what to say about it. Some of his other shit, his mama. His love and respect of, of Jesus and his godhood of, of, of out openly. Some of the shit is right on brotherly preach it. Motherfucker, I'm so sad you're dead. I would have loved to meet you. Just because of your faith. I would have loved to meet him. I'm going to. You know, in the spirit realms, it's all good. Two, you're still here in the park. <laughs> You yeah, only knew. Like I said, only if you knew. All up in this Christian hood. Virtuous. Shit, got my godhead all up in my bitch. Hey, <laughs> y'all nasty folks. <laughs> TMI again. Once again, TMI. TMI, Brittany. Brittany. TMI. T T M I. So, so. I'm a Christian. Obviously, you see it. I, I am born, born, born Christian. I'm a free will Baptist Christian churchgoer. Pastor's daughter, so I'm a all around girl in the church. I do it all. I can do it all. Do I have an obligation to do it all? Absolutely. And I literally came out literally wrong. But it's okay. I've been here for since I had been um, a, a pastor's daughter, like all up in the church, involved at the age of. Eleven, ninety-eight <clears throat> is when yeah ninety-eight <sighs> my dad's been a pastor like official he was growing when I was a baby he was a young punk when I was a baby um So he was growing. He, he began with the teens, the teen ministry. He became the youth minister and the youth pastor. And then, he, and then um, maybe he did that for five years of my life. And then after that, he moved to, a, to another city's church and became a assistant pastor there, like a vice pastor. And, um, up until I was 11 about that, maybe, maybe I'm getting my years, but regardless of the situation, 
I was 11 when he became a pastor. But he became, because he, he claims that like four to five years he was with the vice president of a uh, pastor. And it makes sense to that math because I'm in 10, 11, so maybe it's five to six years? No. No, I wasn't five. I, I was really older in the man of the church. My first church. My home church. Fairfield Church. I'm a Fairfield girl. Homestead bred, so sheltered in Fairfield. There was no such thing as a movie theater when I was living there. None. The mall was was pretty cool, hip, but it's blah, you know what I mean? There was sparkly lights. And across the street, I know I'm going on a topic, but um, across the street was nothing but fields, and that was the fairgrounds. It was fair. And and I lived across the street from, from all of those places. It was awesome. Like, totally fun to live in Fairfield when I was a child. I mean, I was a Christian girl in a strict home. Nothing was bothering me. I was saying there was something out there, you know, that I'm missing. I was not missing anything in my childhood. I had the perfect little fantasy childhood thing you could possibly think of. Shelter to this day and blessed to this moment. I, I'm grateful, godly thankful of my life. So I think I was about seven. Because I actually remember a lot of moments. And I think I was like in grade school when we left um, the church to, to move to a different church for the, for the position. So my dad was in politics of church for a long year, for all my life. And, um, and I grew up this way. I grew up strict in this way as of politics of them telling me, dude, seriously, you represent us. Respect us. Like the scriptures tell us. They do that. Like the scriptures tell us, honor your father and your mother and, and do what's right. Don't talk about our business like that, you know, they would say. And uh, because it's just airing out something that... And what they were getting at when I was younger is we hold a position of leadership in the church. They don't need to know what's going on behind our closed doors because we are holding a position in the church and we need to hold our ground to say the Lord is strong with us and, and really honestly our business was not petty or my personal business but I, that, that, uh, I take that back my personal business was not petty but I understood that at a very young age that closing my mouth and allowing another to be healed is so much more rewarding because they did not know that I had a problem. But yet I was so strong in the Lord because of my position in the church that my mother and my father drilled in us, my, my brother, my younger brother as well. And he's just very younger for me. He's, not, he's like my twin um, in age. Um, so we're very close, uh, but, and he's a male role model for me, very strong in the Lord too as well. I mean, he's very strict. I mean, to this day, he's like, Brit, <laughs> come on, sis, you know yourself, you know you're better. Come on, let's do this. You know, he just, just recently, you know, he knows me. He knows me very well. And it was just a short slip up. It was, it was quick and he was, he was right on it. And that's my loving brother. And that's my Christian loving brother. <laughs> and he's, ava he's not available. <laughs> sort of. I can't. I don't know. That's TMI. <laughs> he's good looking too. <laughs> I want a good Christian woman for him. I do. Good solid free real Baptist Christian woman. That's my sister dream, right? <laughs> he deserves it. So deserves it. He, 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 he earns respect with me because he's, he's the creator who created 
a woman with me. He taught me how to choose, if not what to look for, and how to present myself in front of men. And I'm like, damn, thank you, little brother. <laughs> Got me on the D-Lo. <laughs> and look at me. I am proper, mannerful, all natural, God-fearing, loving woman who knows her Jesus Christ is above all and all and about all for all because of all and she loves all and that's great that's me and that's great <laughs> so living in the strict Christian home being taught the position of a pastorhood because I'm a, I'm a pastor's daughter, I am a role model to spiritual I've like I said, I've held I'm, just because and you know what the Lord has done in my in, in my behalf because I've held my tongue and I've and I've and I suffered through it my own personal life because of my position. He has taught me and grown my faith and blessed me and taught me and those reasons I'm connecting the taught and blessed is knowledge. He's given me answers to mysteries of life that you know as a little girl you just put out there. Your parents says, I don't why does a tree grow with green leaves and and brown branches and 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 you know I don't know well, I forget what a kid asks or me kid asks I'm trying to think of me kid asks <laughs> so went not there I'm just giving you an example okay <laughs> I asked totally different questions as a kid. But giving you the basis, okay? So he gives me those answers and appeases me in peace of support of I am here and I haven't forgotten you <laughs> and me. And and he's taught me with faith. I held my tongue for a reason. I spoke those words for reason. And that's all faith built. Okay? For me. For me. That's all faith built. In my in my everythingness of walk of life of Christianhood. And that's what I breathe, okay? Heart everything. It's my faith. He can do it all. I was like brother I mean to myself and my sister I mean I don't even I don't even know who I speak to at times like I'm like <clears throat> I'll be like oh and that's not even to a prayer on another person it's just by myself my own personal life and I'm like and you know what he tells me stay calm Relax, basically. Chill. Take it easy. Sit back. Relax. Calm down. I got this. And he does. He does it right in front of my fucking face. Like, bam, girl. I'm like, God, you're a wheel. <laughs> I was like, I worship you every day. I praise your name every moment of my life. I bless other people. Just by walking down the street, I, I pray it for the moment. Like, there is no other moment but this one. I live that way. I breathe that way. In the scriptures, he says, salvation is now. That was in Sunday school today in church, and that was true. And that is very true. Now is the moment. Men need to hear the word now. Women, here's great advice. When men says time, you say now. I don't give a fuck. You want anything in life from a man, he asks you for a time, you say fuck me now, 
you just got yourself something better than you can ever dream of. That's the secret of scripture learning. You get to know cool things and apply it to life and it works and it's real and it's like fast cash, dude. I am so fucking me serious. If you ever wanted to get fast cash, read the scriptures. You want to test me? Do it. You want fast cash? You want knowledge to get it? To get whatever you fucking want and fucking anything and you fucking want? Read the scriptures. And I mean holy Bible. Holy Bible. And I respect the words of the book. Holy Bible. And I respect the word of 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 the book. I phonetically spoken that correctly. Check me. Hmm. I'm good. See. If God had the uh, technology like we dream of, of space, and we, he has an intercom in every house and light pole, <laughs> can you imagine life? God having technology. <laughs> I would love life that much more. It's so much cooler. It would be, oh my god, inviting about everything. I'd be like, God, you'd be like, the light bulb. Yes, Brittany. <laughs> what would you like to do today? Because he already knows what I want. Well, God, I just want to just take a stroll with you. And I'm going to the next light pole. Yes, Brittany, I'm here. And, and, and I just wanted to talk to you. Yeah, and this is like at the garbage cans or something because he's really cool. Yes, Brittany, we are listening. Okay, God, just, can you talk to me or something? Because... I'm in a listening mood, I guess, or I'm not so talkative, but I just don't want to be, you know, walking alone. And he's like, at the light pole now. Yes, Brady, we can talk to you. Me and my angels will educate you on the life, what you're seeing now before you, and what's going on before you, my dear. And these my angels, okay, they're going to do performances for you. And they have been entertained by my lord. And I'm no longer alone. I mean, tech tactically, that is actually a reality. It's just not built with technology. <laughs> but it's built with so much more power than technology. It's built with spirit, soul, heart. It's built with his love, with his adornment, with his... Uh, with his want to do. Can you imagine God wanting to do? The Lord, the Father, wanting to do. Can you imagine? I mean, just think about it. I mean, just think about it. If you are a boss, or if you ever helped a homeless person, or, a, or just a person in so much need, they're almost homeless, okay? And then you help them so much, like a big, like you gave them a grand dollar. Or, I mean, I'm talking about a grand dollar bill, okay? You help them that much. You're a boss and you gave them a raise and you made their cherry on the top mint and it wasn't expected from them, from you. And it was just God sent. You can definitely tell it's God sent because to them, I mean to them, maybe not to you, but to them because um, miracles are God sent. Um, but can you imagine, you want it though. So can you imagine your feeling, I'm sure, of course you do, but recall that, recall that. That feeling that made you, that high life, that please, I mean if someone wanted to repay you for it, you were like, please don't. My life, my feelings, Nobody can pay for how I'm feeling because the high life of my moment right now, outrageously, it's too expensive. It's, it's too expensive. 
It's it's so much expensive. It's I'm gonna claim it's priceless. It's priceless. It's it's once in a lifetime opportunity to to live and to serve another with by the giving this gift. And God does this gift to us. He two ways. One, we didn't deserve. But yet, He does love us so much, He stopped suffer. He stopped it by sending His Son, Jesus. We call Him Christ, before, because He, for as He has done it, He crucified. He couldn't have done it alone. The Father had to send Him. He begged. He cried. He pleaded. He prayed. Please, Father, don't send me. 